Good evening and thanks for having us in. A closure of SSM Health's emergency department in Sun Prairie has the area's EMS looking for solutions. Aaron Rodgers saga continues and it had us all feeling like, well, like this. The city of Madison is still moving forward with its lawsuit against Kia and Hyundai for failing to prevent car thefts. It's election night across Wisconsin and we have breaking news to share. Janet Protasiewicz has won the open seat on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Protasiewicz was not a worthy opponent. He called her a serial liar. What do you make of this type of concession speech? Absolute total lack of class. Planned Parenthood has made this clear. It does not respect the Supreme Court's decision, but will respect the law in Wisconsin now back in effect. And with that kind of gray area, what does that mean for people who seek abortion health care in states where it is legal? I mean, does that open up a door for prosecution for simply just traveling to those states. This last segment is Fox 47 Views at 9. I'll be moderating this discussion. Okay, Dungeons and Dragons, I'm not let's even go. in this discussion. You You're not. not. You know, it seems like a good soup night. I it think. is It is a nice snoop night. Wow, snoop, snoop night? Well, we can listen to Snoop Dogg too if you want. <laughs> soup and snoop. Just because you can. It doesn't mean you should. should. <laughs> On all the bases, okay. hit home plate. They go into the dugout. We go to what Applebee's do they get? for apps. No. No? No. That's how I celebrate. Oh. Should we do a Midwest goodbye? Well, well you know, I, I suppose. suppose. Well, two weeks ago, a condominium on Madison's southwest side exploded. Fortunately, no one was killed, but a few people were hurt. It happened at the building on South Gammon Road and Park Ridge Drive. A preliminary investigation found the cause of the explosion may have been a propane source, but that still hasn't been confirmed. Investigators hope to know the cause for certain in the weeks to come. The man accused of killing another man outside Badger Tavern earlier this month is bound for trial. A Dane County court found probable cause that 23-year-old Caleb DiMaggio committed a felony. His case has now been assigned to a judge. DiMaggio has been charged with first-degree intentional homicide in the shooting death of 44-year-old Jason Pritchard. According to court documents, DiMaggio told police Pritchard refused to fight him, but it did not say what may have led to DiMaggio wanting to fight. DiMaggio has been in jail since he was arrested at the crime scene. His bond is set at $1 million. Police in Madison arrested a man who they say has been stealing copper from construction sites. 62-year-old Brad Wells is facing 13 charges, five of them being felonies, ranging from burglary to bail jumping. According to court documents, a trail camera caught him taking spools of copper wire from the same construction site on University Avenue since earlier this month. When police arrested him, he told them he found the wire abandoned at a nearby dumpster and had never been to the construction site before. He'll appear in court tomorrow for a preliminary hearing. Ooh, it sure felt good to be outside today. Temperatures in Madison are climbing into the 80s, but come tomorrow morning, it's going to feel a bit cooler out there. Meteorologist Julian Seawright explains why in the first Fox cast. Okay, Julian, what's the deal? The man charged in a Janesville workplace shooting that left one person dead last year pleaded to a lesser charge in court today as part of a plea deal. Kevin Todd was previously charged with one count of first-degree intentional homicide and four counts of recklessly endangering safety. Online court records show he pleaded guilty to a single count of second-degree intentional homicide. Todd opened fire at Precision Drawn Metals in April last year after working at the business for only a week. In a criminal complaint, Todd alleged that he was being bullied at the company, but employee statements to police did not support those claims. An update now on a murder over the weekend. Dane County medical examiners have identified the man who was killed in a shooting on Madison's east side early Sunday morning. 32-year-old Raheem Blue was found with gunshot wounds at a lounge in the 3700 block of East Washington Avenue. A large group of people was reportedly in the area when a fight began and gunshots soon followed. Police are still looking for a suspect and they're asking anyone with any information on the incident to come forward. Heartbreaking new details tonight and a deadly hit and run on Madison's east side this weekend. Earlier today, the victim was identified as 40-year-old Nicole McDougall. The man accused of hitting and killing her, Anthony Moore, made his first court appearance today. A police report claims Moore was driving at more than 50 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone. He never hit the brakes before allegedly hitting McDougall while she was crossing the road at Aberg Avenue and Shopco Drive. Madison police say help from witnesses was crucial in finding Moore within less than an hour of the initial call. Witnesses provided details about the vehicle, which left the scene. 
saying that it was a black sedan. The report also claims Moore called police saying his vehicle was stolen. He'll be back in court May 31st. A woman who died after her car rolled over and entered a McFarland retention pond last week has been identified. The Dane County Medical Examiner's Office says 83-year-old Betty Stenjum of Monona died from her injuries in the crash. Emergency crews were called to the intersection of Highway 51 and Severson Road just after 10 a.m. on Friday after the crash was reported. America's deadly drug epidemic is worse than ever. Preliminary data suggests 2022 was the deadliest year yet in the crisis. Fentanyl is a major factor. The powerful synthetic opioid is now involved in nearly two-thirds of all overdose deaths in the U.S. But the data also suggests that there are other underlying factors driving up the deaths. For example, overdose deaths involving methamphetamine are rising at an even faster pace than those involving fentanyl. According to CDC data, nearly a third of all overdose deaths in 2021, so that's more than 31,000, involved the drug. Deaths involving cocaine are also up, jumping 24% in both 2020 and 2021. A U-Haul driver who crashed into a security barrier near the White House Monday night has been arrested and charged with several crimes, including threatening to kill or harm a president. The U.S. Secret Service says 19-year-old Cy Kandula of Missouri may have intentionally crashed through the security barriers. The driver was immediately taken into custody and no injuries were reported. A man was taking a photo of the White House when he heard the crash. At first he thought it was just an accident until the box truck backed up and then tried to ram the barriers again. He tried the first time and then went to the second time. And now it is right over there, right in front of the White House. Authorities didn't find any explosives or other devices on the truck, but they did find a Nazi flag. They haven't yet identified a motive. Coming up next on Fox 47 News at 9, America's largest water park has an all-new attraction ahead of the summer season. Still ahead, a look at how next-gen technology is transforming a water slide at Noah's Ark. Oh, geez, Louise, it's Charlie Barron's. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, you know, real good here. <laughs> oh, you know, no, I don't. Tell me, you know, or no. We could go on and on with this. Yeah, there's a couple, two, three things we got to talk about here, you know. So you're going to be coming back here. How does it feel to come back to your alma mater? I'm it, honestly, it's just a, it's a crazy honor uh, to to do that. You know, you look at all like the notable people that have graduated from UW, and uh, you're like, wow, I, you know, I better not screw the pooch on this one. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> well, one thing I love about you is, I mean, you've really embraced uh, being from Wisconsin, being a Midwesterner. Um, you know, a lot of people try to escape their roots, but you've made a whole career out of it. What would your advice be to students who, as they enter the workforce, what would your advice be to them about embracing who they are and not running away from who they are yeah you know i think it is uh, a lot of diving down and finding out you know really just kind of what what lights you up what what makes you you and that could be uh where you're from or whatever it is for me that's what it was i love wisconsin i love comedy that lit me up and, and i i kind of just embraced it and when i did you know everything happened from that point mm -hmm. and that was after spending a lot of years like 10 years you know trying to be really something i wasn't and um and you can find success doing something you're not passionate about and you can find success doing something you're passionate about so you know you might as well uh, do the thing you're passionate about or at least give it a go you know charlie what kind of pearls of wisdom do you plan to share with the graduates Oh, geez, Louise, you know, <laughs> I, I wrote the speech. I'm feeling good about it, but it, really it's um, it's a lot about taking chances, you know, and I think when I first graduated, I was very concerned about what my peers thought about me, you know, and that was in an age when we weren't even posting as much stuff on social media, but we were starting to. And I think sort of a trap people can get in is that they, um, they care so much about what people think and they want to post it and it, or, or show it. And so you're, you're trying to be something you're not almost off the top. And I think 
nobody really cares what you're doing so you might as well sort of do what you love and see where that takes you you know and not worry if you're not making a lot of money right off out the gate i certainly wasn't i was doing odd jobs weird things and uh i mean weird things i just mean weird jobs nothing too, nothing too weird okay but you know it's just it, life is fun and uh, i think it's about finding that fun and, and finding your true self and sometimes we can we can lose lose our way especially early on well, and while you're here, I believe you're signing your book, and it's all kind of a, a survival guide about being from the Midwest. Um, you're kind of an ambassador yeah. of the Midwest now. How do you feel about that title? <laughs> well, look, I mean, truthfully, what uh, my comedy uh, is, is it, I'm not inventing this stuff. Uh, you know, like uh, when I say watch out for deer, I didn't invent that. You know, uh, uh, my grandpa used to say that to me you know and, and we i know what it means it means i i love you in a lot of ways but or like tell your folks i says i i didn't you know invent that you know that's just what i heard growing up so it i actually borrowed a lot from journalism which i majored at uw for my comedy uh and, and in journalism you shine a light on something and that's kind of i think what i've done with certain aspects of the midwest but if people like my stuff they, they're really not liking it for me they're liking it because they like where they came from and that that is what i like about my comedy is that i don't see it as being really about me but i see it as being about the midwest and i love the midwest so charlie last question what is the number one thing if you can pick it that you love about wisconsin oh jeez <laughs> you know it's either the people or the walleyes, and I'm oh. going to have to get back to you on that, yeah. I, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to make you choose. Yeah. You know, too that's tough. too hard. That's too hard. Well, we are being told to wrap up. Should we do a Midwest goodbye? Well, well you know, I, I suppose. It's <laughs> about that time. Uh, but if, if you guys need uh, any meat, I did just win the meat raffle, so I got some. Oh, okay? good. I also got some freezer perch if you're interested, okay? We'll get some coffee and bars ready for you. <laughs> Oh, that'd be great. Dream bars, or what do you got going? Snickerdoodles? What's going on? Snickerdoodles. We love the snickerdoodles. Mm. I mean, how can you oh, not? Oh, thank God. So, okay, I, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you very much. Oh, yep. Well, I suppose. All right. Take care now. <laughs> All right. Take good care there. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Okay, real good. Rising global temperatures could expose billions of people to dangerously hot conditions in the coming years. Scientists say the climate niche where humans flourish is between 55 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Outside that window, conditions tend to be too cold, too hot, or too dry. If the world continues on its projected trajectory, about 2 billion people will be living outside the niche by 2030. They'll be facing an average temperature of 84 degrees or higher. By 2090, that population grows to nearly 4 billion people. Already 600 million people are living outside of the niche. These findings come from a new study published in the journal Nature Sustainability. Millions of Americans are struggling to pay their energy bills. According to the National Energy Assistance Directors Association, Nearly 20 million households were behind on their utility payments as of March. They owe a total of $19.5 billion. That's about $4 billion higher than a year ago. And the high cost of cooling homes during the summer is expected to make the problem even worse. Well, when you're a little kid, your birthday means everything to you. There's a young Wisconsin boy who wants to make everyone's birthday something to write about. Dale Ryman shows us a story from Antigo. Lucas has already sent cards to friends in three other states, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Alabama. And he also makes birthday cards for nursing homes. HBO Max is gone, girl, officially rebranding as Max as of today. The move comes as Warner Brothers Discovery combines HBO Max and Discovery Plus into a singular service called Max. If you subscribe to HBO Max, your apps should have automatically updated to the new Max app although some will be prompted to manually download it. Well, the news at 9 is officially known as 9 now. And Netflix is starting to crack down on users who share passwords despite not living together. In a letter to subscribers today, the streaming service offers two alternatives. They can transfer a profile to a new member and pay for that person, or add an extra member for about $8 a month. Netflix says it allowed password sharing in the past to fuel growth. 
and that led to some hundred million households doing so. But now it wants to focus on its revenue, as opposed to its subscriber base.